What's up guys, we're back. It's episode five of Invincible. That's the fifth, you, you think it'd be the fifth es best episode, but it was the best so far. It yeah. really uh, flowed really together well, and if you're still not unsure about the show, I would definitely watch this episode. You get a better feel for what the show's about. You got a good taste at the end of episode one, but this was probably the best at character building so far. I think it's interesting because we've, and I kind of liked it a lot because, uh, you know, after episode one, you kind of get the, a peek at like where the show might go or what the extent you might see later on for the season. But then it kind of rains back uh, for the next couple episodes after that, seeing, you know, more focus on the characters, having a slaughter bill, you know, just getting more of those relationships, uh, you know, set up for some interesting stuff to happen. And this is the first time I think we've really gotten a good balance of payoff and setting up some more stuff. Uh, so it's, yeah, th there's just a lot of cool things. I mean, we saw Titan, we saw Battle Beast for the first time, which is a big character, and I love how that went down. Um, let's see here, you also have uh, some more, like what, balancing of uh, Mark and Amber's relationship in this. Uh, they're, it looks like they're setting up the thing with Eve uh, to go on, um, what is it, Safari, charity business? Yeah, yeah Safari it's Charity not, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I guess we'll you know just go over like the, the big thing in the room because it was the coolest part and it's also like one of those which uh, just made the episode that much more entertaining. And it was uh, seeing Titan, I think he's the first, one of the first villains Invincible ever goes up against or has an interaction with. Uh, and then uh, we see him kind of returning. Uh, I think they even opened up the episode with him, right? Showing uh, just a little bit more of like, hey, he may not be the stereotypical villain, um, which I like that a lot because there's a lot of times, you know, and especially you've probably seen like the first several episodes, there's a lot of throwaway villains and there's a lot of just like stereotypical, like, hey, they're a bad guy, they're there doing bad things, and Mark's there to, you know, beat them up and taking up his time <laughs> and away from Amber. But uh, this is the first time we actually get to see maybe a more complexity to one of the, the main ones he's going up against, and I do like how it plays out, and I think they do it a really good job in, like, remixing in a way, because obviously this takes place in a different time frame than it did in the books, but I think, you know, they keep the essence the same, and they do a spectacular job of making it a hell of a fight by the end of it. Yeah, um, one thing that I think is a good, um, so this episode you can feel like that there's growth in characters. Um, obviously, well, if you read the comic, you know they were delaying a certain event that's major mm -hmm. in the plot line. Um, and I think one of the reasons they probably decided that is because you wanted to know the characters better before this major event happens, which right. is fair enough since it's a TV show. They can't and show it. They anything. want a big finale type thing, you know, or so mid-season finale, yeah, whatever, whatever it ends up being. But um, but yeah, so but I think this episode was good just to grow Invincible, yeah. our title character. We got to see mm -hmm. not only did he get to see that when he kills someone or like arrest them. Now we haven't seen him necessarily kill people. We haven't seen other superheroes kill people. Right. Um, that there are consequences and like, just cause he's a villain, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that you should just kill him. Yeah. Throw him in the space as uh, one of our uh, favorite, <laughs> favorite other characters did. Uh, favorite a hero that's also an ex-president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you get to see that growth. You do see the, the struggles of trying to um, to work around the superhero life and the uh, normal life. And I think that's going to be continue to be a theme. I mean, you see that a lot in superhero shows in general. Um, but I think how they're doing it, it, it works out well. You have some conflict with Eve. You have actually, what, one of the things that's interesting is you have a co cohesive story in this episode, but you also yeah. have many different plot lines that will extend to the future. You have Robot doing something mysterious. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Cecil and the government doing something mysterious. You have Nolan. We don't know yeah. what's happening. Yeah, and his wife investigating a little bit at their home. So, which uh, that's one that uh, is probably the only thing in here that isn't a remix. Uh, well, in terms of like taking com uh, uh, content from the comic, it's it's you know something that's completely added for the show, and I'm. I, I'm liking it, I think. Uh, it's one that I wasn't too sure on, uh, but I think because of, you know, kind of the drawn out, uh, you know, backseated conflict that they're having with Nolan and, you know, the events of what kicked off the series, I think having his wife being a little bit more questionable or just a little bit more, you know, maybe 
concern for her husband and that leading into, you know, other things that she's doing. A, a very believable and also a nice little backward thing we can do. Because I, I do agree with Michael that um, one of the things that was really nice about this one is we're not just seeing, you know, one piece of the puzzle in this episode, um, you know, and then maybe another piece of, the, of a different puzzle in the episode. It's, it's more so like, yes, we are getting glimpses of things that are being set up for future episodes and probably in, in the seasons to come, but there was a central structure to what happened in this episode. And I think it led to having a really good payoff because we get introduced to a very cool villain, I would say. It's like one of the better ones that are like, you know, maybe low tier scale, but we also get a cool fight to end it off. And I think honestly, in terms of um, Invincible's origin, I think it's one of the one that has maybe some really cool, I guess, insights to uh, just like the nuances of Mark's character, because like one of the things in the final battle is you see Mark kind of lose uh, himself to like rage a little bit, which is a big part of his character, and that you know does play a lot into a lot of the conflicts he has later on in the series. So it was really cool seeing the first glimpse to that. Um, I think they kind of demonstrated that a little bit when you've seen Mark frustrated with Nolan, or maybe some of the things that he said, or just you know in terms of you know starting out his superhero line. But this is like the first time he's actually lost it a little bit in a fight. Now, because of that, you know, and who he's faced up against, uh, I mean, you got that beast of a boss, uh, Battle Beast, uh, which is just a cool thing. I, I can't really talk em enough about Battle Beast, but I'll, I won't go too much because I'm afraid of uh, spoiling anything. But um, I do like, too, because this is kind of the first instance you really see in Invincible being broken physically, you know? Uh, you know, he doesn't get out of this unscathed, uh, and I think from the start of the episode to the end of it, you do really see that uh, contrast. And I think it is a symbol of growth because you really do have Mark really, like when he's fighting like one of the lower scale villains, just taking hits as he's texting Ember. I love that scene, but I think it's just a great comparison of like where you start in the episode versus where you end. And I'm gonna really like to see what growth, uh, you know, and what scenes they show with Mark reflecting on that going on to the next episode or, you know, later in the season. Yeah, so there's kind of three things that stuck out, uh, not necessarily in the episode, but just like discussion topics as, as Josh was talking. First of all, um, Mark almost reveals his secret identity uh, yeah. to Amber, but doesn't end up doing it in the end. So that was kind of something that we'll see the implications of later on. Um, second of all, uh, Battle Beasts. So we back in the first episode, we talked about power levels. And again, I don't care as much as Josh necessarily does about... Because obviously it is important. I understand that yeah. power levels is important to the story as And it's more so like, you know, just making sure the continuity is there. Because I think, uh, you know, that's just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's important. important. You, you finish your thoughts. I was just yeah, going to say, yeah, I think they made Battle Beast a, a more of an interesting character. Well, not more interesting. They represented him correctly as far as how strong he was in comparison to the current heroes that we have. So I think that was good. Mm -hmm. Showing off that he's real strong. And, um... Yeah. We'll, we'll see him in the future. And then the third thing I, w I kind of, since we're this far in, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, get your opinion on, there are reduxing or, you know, reordering a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. And I don't know how involved the author was in the creation of this. Obviously, he gave, he he's someone involved, but I wonder if he has talked down, or talked down, talked, had a conversation with the directors about, like, how this all is going to work in the future. Because it does seem like it's working right now, mm -hmm. um, but it does seem that they're gonna have to make some changes. And I, I honestly think I only trust like the author really to put all those pieces back together. Yeah, you know, like one of the things that I'll try to keep this as spoilery as possible, but um, there is a big thing that we'll see. I'm sure probably they're gonna save it for the last episode because we're already, you know, we only got three episodes left. So I'm sure they're probably gonna save it for the last episode. But, but there's a big thing with um, a thread that's set up in the first episode that is such an integral part to Mark's origin story. And I think Having that in the comic so early on was one of the big things that kind of shapes Mark into the hero that he is and, you know, kind of the the ways that he looks about, you know, maybe certain criminals or how to handle certain criminal activity or people that he comes up against. And I do question a little bit because of it being remixed in that sense how well, because, you know, there's some scenes that in like, like, for instance, in this episode, the fight that we see uh, with him teaming up with Titan, that's after one of those big cosmic events that leads to, you know, really heavily impacting his origin. So it's kind of weird because it's 
it's cool in the sense that you're seeing a different mark kind of handle that situation, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, kind of, I think we're going to get to that point eventually. It's just, you know, taking a different instance, but I haven't seen, I know there's a, I have it queued up. I need to watch it maybe before the next episode, but there is a couple of interviews with uh, the creator, Robert Kirkman, um, discussing the show. And I think kind of his involvement and like how much he was consulted for the creation of the show. So I'd really like to be interested in that, but I do think that um, just judging that like, Skybound directly is in partnership with Amazon that Robert Kirkman probably does have a pretty good handling on it. And I think overall it, it is still one of those that I think is being handled really well. It's just like one of those things that because there's so many moving parts throughout each of the episodes, like I don't think there's been one episode we've had so far that hasn't set up something we're going to see like in season two or season three. So it's really kind of hard to judge it when it's not finalized yet or we don't see the payoff of what's set up. Um, but I think overall it is, it's definitely different for sure. And people that are like really religious, like comic fans may not enjoy some of those aspects, but I think overall it's gonna be something that uh, is gonna be just as enjoyable in its own right. Yeah, and I hope to, switching topics quickly, I hope to see Nolan fight in the near future. Uh, we haven't, he hasn't fought. Yeah on screen for a couple episodes well and that's the thing too is like because they're kind of holding out uh some things uh you know it it makes a weird kind of like well why isn't nolan helping in this situation because we i think they like glimpsed i'm pretty sure they like glimpsed him maybe i just in this episode at this situation, but it did look yeah he, no, was, he was watching there. yeah he was yeah. watching yeah. so like those kind of things because there's this uh, without giving too much away there is like uh, a section where like nolan's not able to be interjected into the story as often and because of that um you know a lot of these scenes because they're taken from for like in the future of the comic than where we're at now it seems a little weird why no one's not having more to do i think there would have been an easy way to uh to counter that because that was already in the comic which you know because the guardians are dead and the new guardians aren't able to you know pick up the same level of jobs or do it in the group as good of efficiency as the old ones no one was like relied on to deal with those bigger threats but they also have the other narrative in the show where like the government doesn't really believe that they can trust in nolan so that kind of answers that but i don't know it is kind of weird but i do think um you know maybe they'll play on that i i, I hope we do get some insights with you know mark and nolan later on maybe addressing some of those situations of being like yeah i was there but you know <laughs> or like you know this that, and the third but yeah it does seem like no one's at home doing nothing more here than in the comics yeah i do i will say uh it was really cool that um his uh wife was able to like figure out how long it takes him to get to certain parts i thought that was a really cool believable way to have it to where no one wouldn't you know realistically be able to interrupt her while she's trying to do her thing so i did think they executed that well i'm still iffy on if i like that or not uh but i do think they're probably gonna change up some things i don't think mark's mom will maybe end up where she does in some parts of the comic but i don't know i'm still really intrigued i'm hyped for the next episode i think we're finally going to be start seeing more episodes like this uh because we kind of you know like i said set up the groundwork so we can really have these longer episodes that you know, maybe deal with like a whole conflict or a whole arc. Mm, well, parts of arcs, parts I guess of I arcs, say. Because yeah. some of the arcs are huge. Uh, but yeah, so I think overall we agree that this is the first episode. Um, it's still really hard for me because the, the fight in this one was really good. And I think they show, you know, parts of the grittiness and uh, violence that I expect from Invincible. So I appreciated those here. But man, there's just something about like the raw intensity of that first episode fight that I just really still like. It is, there are uh, higher stakes for sure um, yeah. in, in the first episode fight. But this episode did, again, it it showed a bunch of throwaway characters and it showed my my boy, you know, oh, yeah. with, the, uh, with the battle battle axe. <laughs> so I uh, uh, hope to see him, him quickly. That, him shortly, uh, that's something that is kind of hard about Invincible is you do have some really cool characters that you don't either don't see for a while or you see them once and then they're not around for a while. Yeah. So that is something that, you know, when you're reading 
comics, it's okay because there's so much stuff going on, but mm -hmm. I feel like that's going to be hard for some viewers to be like, oh, I love that character. And it's like, yeah, you'll see him later. Yeah, they'll, don't worry. Just wait like four seasons and yeah, then they'll be a main player. Yeah, uh, I, I am curious to see how far they will go I, or how soon like the next season will come up. I imagine they suspect that this show will be a banger for with uh, and hit well with audiences. So hopefully the second season will come out uh, long after, but I guess we should talk more about that when we're closer to the finale. So, um, yeah, nothing much more here. If you haven't go, uh, if you haven't yet seen it, go see it because it was really good. And I think if you haven't even started the series, what are you doing? Go binge it now. <laughs> because, now is uh, the time. Yeah. But anyway, guys, we'll see you for the next episode. And as always, peace, guys. Later.